like uh, Alan Watts said, um, no one would be attracted to a Euclidean woman because she would just be straight, all straight lines. It's the, it's the wiggliness, it's the curvature that brings the balance. Wiggliness, that's a scientific term. Wiggliness. Everything has to have the balance. I, I can talk about it, but I can show you even better. Mm -hmm. um, if you could go to my book on the left side of the page, you'll see the five platonic solids. Now these, all yeah. of our axioms, all of our postulates, have been built off of these things. This is what Euclid went down to, to Egypt and pulled these things together. Pythagoras worked. Okay, that's absolutely untrue. I, I think that in Euclid's monumental, fundamental book on geometry called The Element, and again, this is ancient Greece. Uh, it, they're not based on the platonic, the platonic solids. I think he does get eventually get to the platonic solids when he's talking about his postulates about, you know, two-dimensional space and stuff, but they're not that important. They're not very important. Nobody cares, you know? And it's not the foundation of anything. It re they're, they're really not. Like, look at them. They're, they're fun ways to make dice, pretty much. Plato, which they're named after, you know, had this idea, more philosophical than anything, about one represents air and one represents water and one represents... Uh, uh, the wind and the earth. It's, it's like Captain Planet. <laughs> looks like the do Dodecahedron. Looks like that one's a heart. You know, Captain Planet. Whenever I watched that, I was like, I was like what the hell is heart? Like, that, uh, that's a stupid power. <laughs> uh, so, okay, let's elaborate a little. Euclid's book, The Elements, it's based on actually five axioms. This is very well known because I, you know, and I've taken a course in non-Euclidean geometry, which I don't think Terence Howard knows even exists because he acts like it doesn't. He says, oh, we have all this Euclidean math and everything's based on Euclid and Euclidean. It's not. I mean, Euclidean geometry is great at, again, the human scale, like to do calculations and measurements and stuff uh, for architecture, for construction you know to make to make all those aerodynamic buildings that he likes um and his 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 drone <laughs> his drone his drone shape which looks suspiciously like a dodecahedron anyway um euclid's book is based uh, all of euclidean geometry is based on euclid's five axioms which i think the first one is like a, a point is that which has no part Something like that. It sounds like biblical. In fact, I think it was written before the Bible. I think Euclid's, yeah, I think this was, this was ancient Greece, like, like before the common era, before Christ. And it, that's like, that's how it sounds. It's the language is like, a point is that which has no part. Cool. And it's like, okay, the second axiom, I, I may miss. I haven't looked it up in a while. I may misquote it, but the second axiom was like, okay, you can draw, if there's two points, you can draw a line between them. We now call those line segments, but he would call it a line. I think the third or whatever axiom is like, okay, you can, you can extend the line out indefinitely. Not infinitely, because they didn't have any notion of infinity back then, but indefinitely, meaning however long you want to make a line longer, just, just make it longer. E extend it. And then he has an uh, axiom about how all right angles are equal to each other. Um, and then he has, I think those are the four, right? Oh, well, there's no, there's another one about um, if you have a point and you have a line segment, you can construct a circle of that radius uh, centered at that given point. So that's one of the axioms, I'm sure. It's going to be interesting to look back up because I, I, I'm going out this blind, like, like all my videos. <laughs> uh, and the fifth axiom is the one that's the most controversial, which is the, the parallel postulate. It's, it's what really gave rise to non-Euclidean geometry. By, by rejecting Euclid's fifth axiom, uh, you, give, you actually create non-Euclidean geometry. And it has to do with, you can, I can basically summarize it by saying, uh, if you got a line, 
and then a point that's not on that line. There's exactly one line that you can draw through that point that's parallel to the original line. And that's that's a really weird one to kind of wrap your head around. And there's different ways of, there's different equivalences of it, which like one of the, uh, well, something that logically follows from it is uh, the fact that every triangle has the sum of the angles is 180 degrees. And the way he said it even is not the same way that I said it. That's the parallel postulate, but it's the same thing. And it's logically the same thing. So by rejecting Euclid's fifth axiom, you get in spherical geometry, you actually have no parallel lines. Because if you think about a sphere, what a line actually is, is, is a great circle on that sphere. Almost like a like an equator or like a like a prime meridian, like a it's the largest circle that you could draw. And so there are no parallel lines. In in spherical geometry, there are no parallel lines. In hyperbolic geometry, there's an infinite number of parallel lines that you can draw through a given point that's not on another line. And another consequence of that is that um, when you add up the angles in any triangle, so if you're doing like trigonometry in, in hyperbolic space, you add up the three angles and they always are gonna be less than 180 degrees. So that, that, there's a little summary there of non-Euclidean geometry. And again, none of that, none of it, has anything at all to do with the platonic solids. None of it. And these were the undisputed fundamentals of God that he used to build. If you tap onto the Flower of Life Platonic Solids things, it's going to take you to a video. Turn it, you know, don't have to turn it. But it'll show you the Flower of Life. But you'll see that instead of following the natural curvature of these 64 circles overlapping, they invented straight lines. Mm. They, yeah. Why did they do that? Because they believed that the world was flat. Uh, <laughs> How ironic is that? Because he talks exactly like a flat earther. His arguments are almost the exact same as a flat earther. And so many people in my comments have been saying, like, I'm surprised that he doesn't believe in flat earth theory because he believes in all sorts of weird, crazy pseudoscience and it would it would not surprise me if he was a flat earther, but he's not. Which is weird, because he believes that one times one equals two. That is to say that he just believes in all sorts of weird he thinks that our DNA is like singing or celebrating or whatever and, 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 and tightening and uh he's had such some of the weird uh things that I've ever heard come out of somebody's mouth. Um yeah, it's just, it's so astonishing. Um, believe the world was flat at the time. And the church promoted Pythagorean theorem comes off of this cube, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So they want... Oh, he memorized. He memorized Pythagorean theorem. Does he, can he explain that it's, you know, the sum of the squares of the, uh, the legs of a right triangle is, uh, are, if you sum them up, they're equal to the square of the hypotenuse does he know that i mean he could memorize that too i guess i mean even the even the scarecrow from uh wizard of oz i think said that i think it was actually actually misquoted it when he got his brain that's that's kind of like what terrence howard reminds me of it's like like the scarecrow before he got his brain um this is getting pretty long so uh let's uh let's revisit this a little bit later Thanks, everyone, for your support. Uh, I got a lot more subscribers because of Joe Rogan, actually, and because of Terrence Howard and what a lunatic he is. Can I, can I stop you there? I, I'm so glad Joe Rogan's like, can I stop you there? Because, like, yes, please, please put a stop to this. Let's see if he does. And we know that not to be true. <sighs> what Walter Russell was missing, he didn't have the wave conjugations. He didn't have the, the mirror shapes, the all shapes. And that was because of a mistake that was <laughs> the all shapes. This is acid talk. He's like he's talking like he's on acid. Made six thousand years ago, maybe they took the flower of life, which was that symbol. Mm -hmm. um, if you could go to my book, tcltlc.com. Oh, Stay tuned.